Hello, David Harper of the Bonic Turtle with a brief tutorial on using the normal distribution. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how we use the normal distribution in a simple example to estimate the possible future stock price under an assumption. So what I first need are four assumptions. First, today's stock price, I round it uh, and I'm going to assume that's $10. Then I assumed that the expected return or mean on the stock is 8%. I'm assuming that's annualized, and then I'm making a very simple assumption that it's one period equals one year. So I expect the stock to return 8% over one year. Then I have a volatility, which I'm also going to assume is annualized. So the annualized volatility or we could call that the instantaneous standard deviation on the stock is 20 percent. Those are three inputs. The decision I need to make is about the confidence. What kind of confidence do I want to have about the future stock at the end of the one year period where I have an expected return of 8 percent but a volatility of 20 percent? I'm going to select 90 percent as the confidence interval it's an interval, so I have a 2 here to indicate 2 tail, and I need to translate that into a 1 tailed confidence because I need a cumulative distribution. 90% at 2 tails is the same as 95% at 1 tail if I have a symmetrical distribution, which I do in the case of the standard normal distribution. So if we look here over at the normal distribution. This is characterizing my assumptions here of mean 8% and volatility 20%. So what I mean is the peak of this symmetrical normal distribution is 8%. You can see here is 8%. The standard deviation is 20%. That means if I go over here minus 20%, that is from 8 to negative 12%, that's one standard deviation to the left. I'll go back to 8. If I go one standard deviation to the right, 8 plus 20 percent is 28 percent. That's one standard deviation. What I want is I'm assuming my returns are normally distributed, and I want an interval with 90 percent confidence meeting. I want to go down to over to the left and over to the right such that the area under the curve occupies 90 percent of the total area under the curve. So it's two-tailed. But if I can go out here to such a point that I have 90% under the curve, that means I've got 5% to the left and 5% to the right, right? Because 90% under the curve plus 5 plus another 5 gets me to 100. That means if my line is over here at 90% on the two-tailed interval, then I have 95% of the area under the curve. That's 90% here plus this 5% tail. That's 95% to the left, and that's my cumulative distribution, such that if I use this Excel function here, equals norm s inv, and take as the input the 95%, I'm getting the inverse of the standard cumulative normal distribution, and I, it returns for me a value of 1.64. What that means is if I go back here to the curve at 8%, and I go plus 1.64 standard deviations, that's going to be about out to here. And if you just imagine a line here, I am now positive 1.64 standard deviations. That means the area under the curve to the left of this, because this, now I'm talking about cumulative, the area under the curve to the left is 95% of the total area under the curve. So that means this line here, if I could go over it symmetrical and draw a line over here on the other side, that within those two lines I really have 90%. 95% cumulative means 90% inside the interval. So really I just need that critical value of 1.64 to scale out my standard deviation and determine for me the interval. So now I'll use that. 8% is my expected return on the stock. 20% of my volatility, 1.64 is my critical value. And so now I'm going to calculate the lower value. And here I'll just re-input this formula to show you how simple this is. I say equals my expected return of 8% minus the volatility 
that's 20%. So if I just stopped there, I would just be moving one standard deviation, but I need to multiply it by my critical value. So basically, I'm going from 8% at my mean, and I'm subtracting 1.64 standard deviations to the left. Gets me negative 24% somewhere out here. All that means is uh, that line here would be 1.64 standard deviations to left of mean, and I want to go to the right of mean as well. So here, I would say equals the mean plus the product of my volatility and my critical value and that gets me 40.9 percent so that's going to be a line out here and those two lines they bound they bound this curve in such a way that the area under the curve is 90 percent of the total area under the curve so it's my 90 percent confidence interval on the returns finally I need to convert that to a stock price so if we look here's the formula if I continuously compound ten dollars at a rate of R over T periods, this is all I need to do. Ten dollars exponential function or E raised to the R times T. Remember I'm simplifying and saying T equals one. We're doing one period equals one year. So really all I need to do is ten dollars E raised to my rate and I'm going to get my future stock price. So I want to do that both in the lower bound and the upper bound. So on the lower bound here, I would really just say my stock price, that's my $10, multiplied by exponential function of my lower bound. And that gets me $7.80. So that's my $10 continuously compounded at negative 24% gets me a future price of $7.80. That represents the price I would get at the left end of my interval and I do the same thing at the right end I say ten dollars multiplied by the exponential function of my forty percent return gets me fifteen dollars so now I've used those returns to estimate future stock prices here's seven dollars and eighty cents at the low end fifteen dollars and five cents at the upper end but those bound a 90% confidence interval on the future stock price assuming here's the critical assumption and here's where the wheels may come off the wagon that those returns are normally distributed meaning I can fully characterize them by um, well here a mean of 8% and a volatility of 20% but that's an application of the normal distribution this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle thank you for your time